Wow, I'm trying to follow that. <laughs> I got lost for a second. You're very intimate today. <sighs> so I'll start to open. <laughs> I love to open. I just said exactly the opposite of that. <laughs> Structure. Good morning. Vietnam. Everybody. Okay. So I'm so happy that you all came to this uh, Friday morning meditation. And uh, the title is All About Borders. These two are in good space this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so borders, of course, is a hot topic. But this meditation has nothing to do with the situation with politics. Um, when things play out in wars and uh, conflicts between countries, it's already in a situation where it's far away from the individual. The way the individual responsibility then is to deal with the uh, uh, consequences, with the damage. It's like in a car accident, you don't say, okay, let's meditate on peace. <laughs> you move immediately with what's needed. <laughs> I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we heard a lot through the healing courses about the whole issue of borders. It's a, a key topic in uh, psychology. When you talk about borders, you mean boundaries? Yeah. Okay. Borders. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just one major. Healthy boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which, when you see books written on healthy boundaries, it suggests that there's such a thing as unhealthy boundaries. About which you don't read so many books. <laughs> So what's nice to do in the, uh, with ourselves in meditation especially is to uh, move with an inquiry, to, to investigate what within ourselves is perhaps not such a helpful boundary or border. So if it's not helpful, probably it's coming from a place of fear or anger, or a, a loss of a control, powerlessness. Meaning, probably it's unconscious. If it's unconscious, then uh, we are not free. I'll give an example. If somebody has a, a terrible fear of uh, getting sick, getting ill. Strong unconscious fear of illness. Uh, so much so that he doesn't want to uh, feel it at all, this dread, because he knows if he goes, if he opens that door, he's going to be in a place of horror, maybe for a few days worrying about what it is, this thing on his arm, what is, all about all the diseases he would have. He's a hypochondriac. The unhealed, unhealthy boundary is so strong that when somebody says to him, hey, you're looking really healthy today, he can't take it in at all. Because what about yesterday? Did I look unhealthy? Does she expect me to look unhealthy? So it's disconnecting him from others. <coughs> he puts a boundary within his feeling that this whole issue, I can't go there. So even when something really positive is coming to, towards him from the world, this boundary comes forward, an unhealthy boundary. This I don't feel. We don't talk about my health. Full stop. So that's a classical fear where unconscious boundaries are actually sabotaging the person's connect ability to connect to others, to themselves, to their health at all. And that's just one example, but in, in the whole uh, system of marriage and relationships, Faithfulness, you can see couples disconnecting completely from each other because of uh, a fear.
feelings around sexual betrayal, for example. So the man says, you look beautiful today, and she's like, <coughs> I like the way your, the, your body moves like this, and it's, oh God, that means he's looking at women's bodies. What? <laughs> you know, this is not allowed. She can't take it in. There's a, a reflexive boundary. If this unhealthy boundary was brought into awareness in a way that we're going to practice in, in the meditation, then it would be possible for people to set a conscious, boundary. This for me right now is not what I need. So a conscious boundary is much more like we are the parents of ourselves. We're protected, we're the guardians of ourselves. So this person who is Georgie is feeling tired, exhausted, under threat right now. So this person I'm going to say leave her alone for now. This is, for now. This is a healthy boundary. It's not saying anything. It comes from a person beyond the one that needs the boundary. Because it's conscious, it can also be taken away. Because it's conscious and it's only for now, the oversight of the whole situation, also the person, Georgie, who is, uh, needs a boundary, also the ones to whom the boundary are being set, the connection is kept. It's not like, you hurt me so I kill you. <laughs> or, I'm exhausted so I'm going to slam on the doors and lock myself up. It's not disconnected. So the movement is really a play with boundaries between consciousness, the freedom of consciousness to put a border, and the openness of awareness that it should stay open. So the openness of awareness means that you stay open, you're conscious of everybody in the room, at the same time, you put order. It doesn't mean that you put a border consciously that uh, you would have to withdraw your sensitivity and awareness from everybody that you put a border to. This is, this is an adult border. It means if I say, Libby, be quiet now, doesn't mean that I'm blocking you out and you don't have a right to exist anymore. It's still absolutely still there. I'm still in total connection with you. It's just a request for this particular issue of noise, for now, to give some space. It's much more negotiable. It's much more uh, uh, constructive in terms of relating. Of course, relating between individuals in the end of the day or together, when this is integrated with this healthy boundary business, then as a, as a collective people, the boundaries become much more healthy, much less black and white, much less us and them, much less conflict. When we talk about uh, boundaries, borders, Then, uh, often what we see if we talk about the unconscious boundaries or the boundaries which are taken as absent, I cannot accept this. In the background, we talk about fear. And the whole movement from fear to freedom, it's incredibly helpful, as Georgie brought forward, to be more conscious of the boundaries you put in. I need this right now. The boundaries are there because our system needs to function. So we put a boundary. I don't want to hear about any illness because the moment I hear about in illness, it brings up so much emotion inside myself. <coughs> it's so dangerous, it's so threatening for the whole system that I don't want to hear about it. It's a kind of protection. <coughs> and this makes it incredibly important to, uh, I forgot the word, but to accept the boundaries of other people. Not to kind of move, this is a stupid boundary, buff, I move through it. But to respect the boundary of another person. So if a person gives a boundary, that means this situation for me is unsafe. It's not our responsibility to 
push people from an area which is maybe more traumatized or more fearful for them, unsafe for them, into a liberation by kind of showing them, moving them over boundaries. So it's important to respect boundaries, but at the same time, in the work towards ourselves, and maybe in the dialogue we can have with another person about our boundaries or the boundaries of another person, we can help ourselves or support the other person to help him or herself, kind of, you know, to move more beyond the boundary, because every boundary we put is a two-sided boundary. It's also limiting our own freedom. So while in that moment the boundary is being set, I say to you, don't talk to me please about, the, about any illnesses. That's what I'm asking for. Yeah. So that's a boundary I'm putting towards you about what you can and cannot do with me. Yeah. But in the meantime, of course, it's limiting me because I'm not free because anytime anything mentions illness, I'm, I'm you susceptible. You freeze inside. I'm susceptible to that. You, you, I'm both. You get stuck. It's not with every boundary like this. Right. But a lot of boundaries, especially the stronger unconscious boundaries, the taboo issues, the things we don't want to have to do anything with, is a limitation also for our own freedom. And then there is another aspect in it, which is the social aspect, which is very important. But Often, when a person sets a boundary, it is perceived both by the person as by the one who the boundary is set to as a rejection, as a lack of trust. And again, when we look to this, then what we do is we put the boundary if we are following this belief. And at the same time, we have to disconnect because we're basically rejecting the other person. Or when we feel a boundary, we don't put the boundary because we don't want to hurt the other person. So the very simple fact of it's unsafe and I put a border, I put a boundary, becomes a very complicated issue. And this is so important because it brings in the whole issue of the right to exist, of existence itself in this depth. And rejection. If you have a fear to put boundaries where it's unsafe for you, the backslash of this is when people move over your borders, is that it gives a pressure on your right to exist. Your allowance to be here as you are. You're not good enough. Something is wrong with you. You're too sensitive. You're not able to really relate socially. There is something wrong. The same the other way around. You're able to put boundaries to say no, but the other person is collapsing. So the other person gets the feeling that in this area he's not got the right to exist. There's something wrong with me. You cannot trust me. Why not? I never, 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 never did something wrong. So one of the first steps in putting boundaries in my eyes, our eyes, is that the respect and understanding of each other's boundaries is so important. And from the respect <coughs> and acceptance of the boundaries of ourselves and the others, we can slowly move together into a more safe situation. The moment you say no and another person says, okay, I accept it, but I don't understand. An opening is possible. And movement is possible. It becomes more safe. And again, we put our boundaries most of the time because.
because it becomes unsafe for our system. So when you think about it in, in real time, you know, you're in a party or something in a social place, you come and somebody does something which goes over a, a boundary. <coughs> so what's happening in terms of feeling then is often a kind of Ugh! There's this kind of a moment of shock. Like it, it mutes you, you stop speaking. Often, even if it's just for a few seconds, it's just like flip back into self, you push back. In that moment, it's the first opportunity in terms of healthy boundaries. Because in a way, the first movement of a healthy conscious boundary is doing nothing, being but becoming totally conscious. So in that moment of like staggering out, you were hit. Something went through a, a border which perhaps you didn't even know you had. What's really good is to, even if it's just a matter of a few seconds, to take an extra few seconds to breathe, just to, to become conscious of breathing, to, and to become conscious of the body. Consciousness, when you become conscious in the now, to release any story at all, really, to release the mind and to bring the full consciousness to the physical body. In the here and now. The moment we do that, the strongest boundary we have is awakened, which is our own physical controls. But when we bring our attention to our feet, to the air on the skin. And it's a movement beyond the mind, which is about to re replay an old pattern of, you know, this guy's ripping me off, oh dear, I can see it happening, but I'll go away along with it. It, 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 it gives that. You give yourself in this space, just a space, <laughs> conscious space, an opportunity to break a pattern. When we move into the now, into the consciousness of the body, and there's the safety of being, hey, I know I'm here physically. It's different from the guy who's listening. And then, meanwhile, there's this whole amorphous pain thing going on. So what will come forward in the next stage will be pain, or where, where it hurt. This is a second extremely healing movement, because this is what is beyond the boundary which has not yet been put. This is going to cause the boundary. This is going to say, don't look at me like that. <coughs> this pain. And it could be that it, you're absolutely right to put a boundary, but it could be that it's limiting your freedom. Because there's pain. And when there's pain, something's asking to be healed. Something is needing attention. Something is controlling you and limiting your freedom. So this pain, what is it, this pain? Did the other person, perhaps they have no idea that they just hurt you. Maybe it's a few people just looking at you and not talking to you as well. Perhaps they have no idea, it's nothing to do with them and it's everything to do with you. So why is it there? Why is the pain there? For which we have to put a border to these people who are perhaps completely innocent, probably. It's there because we love them. It's there because we care. The pain itself is made of love which is thwarted. Probably through patterns of the same thing happening since we were a child, where this love was kind of thrown into a freeze. So in allowing the pain, it doesn't matter if it's in real time or later on because such pains are always accessible. <laughs> if you miss feeling pain right now, don't worry about it, you'll feel better. You can always get it back later. <laughs> Until you don't need it <laughs> It waits. <laughs> Until it's done. But the advantage of allowing the awareness to feel the pain that is there is that at a certain stage, the love which is causing the pain begins to reveal itself, and the pain itself begins to return. And energetically, what you can see is a kind of quite upward movement, often of energy from the heart. Often it will mean that there's a pressure on the thyroid. This is where we have not spoken our truth. <laughs> and a flow can be 
really set up. It's an incredible relief. Relief. It's a process, but with every border, it's worth checking. At any stage, it doesn't mean you can't put a border. I need time now. Or I know this has nothing to do with me. I recognize this. I can smell my pattern here. So for now, I'm just not going to relate. This is an inner border. I'm not going to be reactive. I'm not going to immediately think and believe and feel that because these three girls are not talking to me too, that that means that I'm rejected by everybody. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Until later on tonight when I'm going to safely look at the pain behind it. Already there's a difference. And out of that difference, there's much more freedom. Because then when there really is <coughs> an aggression or an insult, there's much more freedom to see it for what it is. That's not OK. It comes naturally. Hey, I'm here. It really comes naturally. It's not from this place of trauma. So it's really quite an interesting, the whole issue of borders is quite an interesting interplay between the three layers of perception, which in itself liberates the energy to move through the form of who we are, which is always good for everybody. How is a place of emptiness relating here? I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I heard conscious, I heard the awareness of consciousness, but I didn't really hear. Emptiness is in the ability to uh, let go of any single level. So if immediately, when somebody you know, goes like this to you, you go like this, and this is an ability, the extra space behind, to say, OK, I'm not going to go there. This is not who I am. This is what little Gina is doing. Doesn't mean I have to buy into her story. Just because he did this, I have to do this. No, I can do nothing. I can watch it play out. Emptiness is in the ability and the trust to allow the pain to yourself to feel the pain. Because it's not who you are. Because just in allowing it, there's already a investment in the fact that it's not forever, it's not absolute, it's not part of you. And in that movement, it begins to move through emptiness. Through emptiness, it can transform. So, Emptiness, unlike consciousness in the world, where everything is all the time always there, but this is the factor that allows uh, freedom. So in a way, it's most connected to emptiness, because borders is all about freedom. In form. Emptiness in itself is borderless. Mm -hmm. Which means that if you're in emptiness in the whole process, what you see is the form coming forward, taking place, the interaction from the form with the mother form, and then it gets stuck. And if we can move through emptiness, basically, it doesn't necessarily need to get stuck. It can just develop in itself, in the form which comes forward from the primal form, in the other form. So the whole process of containing the whole process of transforming, the whole process towards liberation, is open. So we put our borders with the mind. The heart frightens back. But emptiness is able to contain that whole process. Well, classically, it's these moments where you wake up and say, my God, I'm stuck. As Robert Williams said, I'm bummed. This is the moment. I'm stuck. I'm in it. I'm in that space. It's when it's got you. Then the emptiness is like, okay, this is stuck, but I'm not. Yeah. This is what the emptiness brings. Because the moment you, you can say, I'm bummed, there is a space beyond that. So what am I going to do with this one and this bump? It gives that opportunity. Even if it's just to say to everybody around you, I'm bummed right now, give space. But that I is not who you are, because you're the one saying it. It's the one of whom you are, the guardian, the form. The form is in trouble, give space. That's a healthy point. Also, there's so much to say about emptiness. It's so, because it's such an amazing space, the moment that you say, I am bummed, that, and part of you is aware of it, watching it, perceiving it. 
practically never was bound and never will be bound and never could be bound. And, and this space <laughs> yeah. is so much bigger yeah. as the space where you're bound. It's such a such a more a bigger space that being bound is a kind of freeze in the moment which the next moment can move again. It's like a little <gasps> okay. And that's not a con conscious choice. It's not okay, let's move through it or whatever. Okay. It's just in the pure consciousness, the pure awareness, the pure perception through emptiness that something freezes. There is such a healing coming towards this automatically. If we just allow it totally to get its form in freezing, that it will start to decrease by itself. It's not work. It's a natural movement. It just stops for a moment because it's difficult. And this is obvious in this. So also the place to be very conscious of, aware of conscious of, in this process is the stuckness that can also come from what the story the mind begins to create about. That would be the real stuckness. Exactly. We get stuck and the mind goes into the library, get all the books about the subject, the absolute truth. Personal library. Yeah, personal, personal library. library. There's a book, there's a chapter yeah. on why I'm like this, there's a chapter exactly. on why I'm like this. Okay. And then the mind kind of starts this whole process of protecting the system. From what? From, from, from all the stories, from all the pains it imagines? From all the, the pain, pain, all the emotional okay. disquiet okay. which can come forward, the threat which can come forward, what could happen. Right. You, you understand? Yeah. And that's not wrong. Right. That's also a learning process. You know, when we sit on the stove, it's, it's wise not to do this again. So this library is important. But not always it's helpful. Because, you know, at least we could check if the stove is on or not. It's also an automatic library. It's so also automatic. It becomes automatic. automatic. Yeah. Yeah. So how do they try to avoid feeling the pain? Right. Yeah. The mind, for all its beauty, can set up a whole new life, which is about feeling the layers of this. But for that, respect is also a key word, because you respect your own pain. It's there for a reason. It's made of love. It's not like something to be rejected with a hundred stories. It's something which is very, very precious while it's there. It's telling a story. And it's telling a story which has much more depth than any story that reflected in the mind about who I am and what I am, what this and what that. But it's telling a story of feeling. So behind pain, when we're talking about borders, one of the layers that can come forward very strongly in the pain is shame. The incredible feeling of shame. Rejection can come forward. There's many, many, many things to explore there. And it's we're not used to feeling our own pain in the heart, which means that our hearts are often half two thirds closed. Because it there's frozen here, it's frozen here, it's frozen here, because we don't mentally we're in patterns to avoid whatever feeling what is there. But in this we sacrifice our love and our freedom. And it's really curious if you can just take the feeling, because it's not the feeling in itself of say shame. How it feels to feel shame. It's kind of like a hot jacuzzi. It's, in itself, the feeling is not that terrible. It's, it's the reflexes that come out of it. It's not unbearable if we allow it. And also, it's possible when we are the one allowing ourselves to feel it, to say, okay, this is. Uh, so now I'm going to feel how nice it is to have skin the floor with my feet for a few minutes and then I go back to that again. Dabble a bit more in the hot jacuzzi and back again. You said Because you are the one who's <coughs> running the, the show of what to feel when through a process of analysis. And we can be gentle. You said it tells a story, not the, a story that's deeper, farther back in the story of mind. A right? story of cause and effect which leads back to love. Often or home, or freedom. It has a story not in terms of this, that, this, and this, and this. Right, right, right. It's like what causes what. So we have the border, the emotion, the anger, the reflex. What's, what caused that? 
some kind of pain, some kind of hopelessness. What causes it? It tells a, a story which takes us to a whole different route of deep Sentient stories, and maybe story is the wrong word. It's a no, it's process. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it has a process of cause and effect, which brings us back to ourselves. And that. So the meditation, first of all, <coughs> is to uh, uh, become as comfortable as possible, and to find in the body, first of all, to concentrate on the breathing. <coughs> as relaxed and naturally as possible. And then to move towards all the common place sensations around the body, sitting in a room where we feel pleasurable. Pleasurable to be in a body. The air on the face, the uh, miracle of feeling the warmth in the hands. And to uh, surf a little bit around the uh, surface of the body, the you know, one inch out where the air is touching the skin, the body, really the contours, how it is to be physically conscious here and now. This is the first stage. The second stage is that you take any emotion, any feeling, any memory, about a feeling or an emotion. This can be shame, this can be fear, this can be guilt, this can be anger. And you just connect with this emotion, with the idea from your mind that you really are there to enjoy this emotion. Enjoy the fullness, the beauty that you're able to experience this emotion. This can be positive, this can be negative, it doesn't make any difference. You can take love, you can take happiness, you can take joy, you can take liberation, you can take anger, you can take sadness, you can take heartbrokenness, whatever you want to take, it doesn't matter. But take something which is not too difficult. Not something like you, which is absolutely forbidden inside yourself. This <coughs> will be too big to eat. Take something which you know already and you're on the edge of kind of able to totally let be. Anything, any emotion is okay. And just connect with it, attune to it, without a cause. You can take the cause as a memory, the birth of my son, beautiful, then happiness comes forward, and, or whatever feeling, what was there. <laughs> <laughs> and just attend to the feeling and let the feeling be, and try to enjoy <coughs> your sentience. The ability to feel, <coughs> the ability to feel shame. Shame is so beautiful. Fear in itself, if it can move freely, it's so beautiful. It's yum, 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 yum. Because fear is a highway to real liberation. It gives such, if you can just let it go, such a clarity and awakening. At a certain moment, you all will be grateful for fear coming forward in your lives, which will not be that often.
pick another emotion, another feeling, attune to it, allow it to be there. Try to really, really enjoy it. Not to solve it, not let go away, just cheerily enjoy that this also exists as an opportunity to experience inside yourself. It's part of life. And again, ID golden rain around yourself to underneath your feet. You can take it off. So. The first circle is goldless. And then afterwards, the circles are going through gold. Go, we finish every time we seal it with gold. <clears throat> seal it. Yes? Okay.